you may be seated in the name of Jesus. So, for those who may not know me, I'm Benjamin. I'm born again. I love Jesus. I I I love Jesus, and I love serving Him. I love being with His people. I'm a son in this house, and I thank God for this far. I'm married to one wife, and we are blessed, by the way, with three kids. Hallelujah. Guy. Can you give Jesus a good clap? Hallelujah. Yes. The last time I stood here, we had two kids. We have a third born. Her name is Zaria. Hallelujah. Eh, hey, Terry is Zaria. And she's blessed. Amen. They sent me the greetings. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to hear the, the word of God. We are talking about hearing the voice of God. And the theme of, of uh, the scripture that is uh, guiding us through this theme is in John chapter 10. Let's just go there. John chapter 10. I believe you came with your Bibles. Uh, sorry, John. John 10 verse um, 27. Let's just go there quickly. Okay, verse 27. The Bible says, My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My sheep listen to my voice. This is Jesus saying that my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, underline that, and then underline, and they follow me. We are talking about hearing the voice of God. And I'm just here maybe to, to lay a, 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 a foundation. But this is something that all of us as believers, we grow every day. Now, I know there are times and there are levels in our lives where we have not reached to that place of hearing the voice of God, hearing God speaking to you as an individual. But it is something or, uh, you know, you, we grow into it. We all grow into it. But it is the will of God for every believer and for every child of God to learn and to know how to hear the voice of God. Because God is always speaking. I begin by saying that God is always speaking. In fact, God is willing to speak more to us than us speaking to him. Because God, he knows the beginning. The Bible says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. So he knows the beginning of our lives. He knows how our lives ought to be. And he knows the ending, the destiny of our lives. And he can, you know, we can never get to that destiny unless we hear God speaking to us and directing us towards that destiny. So it is very important for you as a young person to realize that your way to your destiny is as uh, successful as your ability to hear from God. Praise the Lord. Please, let's communicate. Nikifanya hivi mnafanya. Hallelujah. Amen. Your way to your destiny or your success in life is tied to your ability to hear God. That means that if you are not able to hear God, there is a possibility that you are bound to fail. You are bound to miss on your destiny. Praise the Lord. So it is as serious as that. Let me say this. Sometimes we may rely on people to guide us towards our destiny. But sometimes, or let me say, it is your responsibility to follow God, to follow his voice 
towards your destiny. No one will come and hand you your destiny like this on a silver platter. Praise the Lord. It is your responsibility. There are people who will pray with you. They will pray for you. That's why we have spiritual fathers. That's why we have pastors. They are there to guide us and hold our hands. But the only person who will lead you to your ultimate destiny is you and your obedience to following the voice of God. Praise the Lord. And therefore, this is something that you need to take very seriously. That's why I began by saying this is a very, very serious topic. Because this can make or break your life. This can make you achieve your destiny or abort it. And until we learn that our destiny is tied to our ability to hear God, we will never achieve it. So I want to go a bit deep and let you know that God demands of you that you learn how to hear his voice. It's not a, a, a request. It is a demand. He demands of you that you learn to hear, and not just hear, but to follow his voice. Because God is always speaking. And because God wants you to achieve your destiny, he wants you to, to get to where he created you to be, then he demands you to listen to his voice. Hallelujah. So I'm saying, uh, or rather, we are saying in John chapter 10 verse 27, the Bible is saying, my sheep, uh, Jesus is saying, my sheep, they know me. They know my voice. And then they follow. So I want to start by saying that hearing the voice of God can only be in a place of relationship with God. Hallelujah. You cannot hear the voice of God if you have no relationship with God. And, and the more you go deeper in your relationship with God, that is the more you are able to hear him. And as I stand here, I'm not perfect. We are all growing. I'm saying we all grow in different stages, in different uh, you know, levels in our lives. We grow in our ability to hear God and not just hear him, but also to follow his voice. So, uh, I want us to read John chapter 10, that scripture. We read it uh, from verse 1 to verse 5, so that we see a few things here. So, John 10, verse 1 to verse 5. The Bible says, I believe we are there, that I tell you the truth... The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. And definitely that is the devil. Hallelujah. Now the man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. And that is Jesus Christ. Now the watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep, not that, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now, let's first pause there. You see, the Bible is saying Jesus, who is the shepherd, or he's giving the example of a good shepherd. Wakati anaingia kwenye zizi ama whatever. Naito aje in kikuyu, that one. Akiingia hapo, Wakati anaingia tu, au mbuzi wanaweza tambua, hapa kuna mtu tunajua. Now I want you to see, a sheep, naturally, a sheep is a very stupid animal. True or false? Aye, it won't get. A sheep is a very kind of a stupid animal. Sindio? Lakini Biblia inasema, Wakati huyo mbuzi anasikia sauti ya, 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 ya shepherd. No, that one. I don't know where my Swahili went. Wakati anasikia hiyo sauti, anatambua. Ya kwamba huyo ni mtu ambaye ninajua. Na anapo tambua hivo, huyo, huyo shepherd anaanza kuwaita kwa majina. Now I want you to reason. 
How can a sheep know that even it has a name? That tells you that we ought to have more sensitivity even, you know, ten times or a hundred times more than that of a sheep. A sheep is able to discern there is someone I know and that person I, I have enough trust. Hallelujah. Na sisi watoto wa Mungu tunafaa kuwa na uwezo na discernment ya hali ya juu ya kwamba tunaweza gundua ama kutambua sauti ya Yesu very easily. If it is difficult for a sheep to be able to hear the voice and to know its name, lakini inaweza sababu huyo shepherd ni mzuri. How much more easy should it be for us to be able to discern and to know the voice of our shepherd Jesus Christ? That's why I want to say as believers as as children of God it is a disaster it is very bad when we are not able to know the voice of God. I want you to see the irony. Jesus is giving the example of sheep. Animals that are naturally very stupid. Lakini zimeweza kujua sauti. Na zimeweza kujua ya kwamba zinaitwa na zinafuata. Hallelujah. How many are wiser than sheep this morning? There are hands that I'm seeing down. I don't know. <laughs> if you're wiser than a sheep, just lift up your hand. Look at your neighbor. <laughs> Tell them, I, you are wiser. I believe you are wiser than a sheep. Hallelujah. And therefore, just as a sheep has a shepherd and follows it, we who are the sheep of Jesus Christ, we know, we ought to know our shepherd and to follow him. Hallelujah. Amen. This is good. Hallelujah. Verse 5, no, verse 4, the Bible says, when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and his sheep follow them, uh, follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. Hallelujah. I wonder why we who are born again, we, are, we follow a stranger called Satan. Wewe ni kondo wa mungu, na siwa msiende kusema he, umode turumeto, apana, you are, you are the sheep of Jesus Christ. And the Bible is saying that a sheep will never follow a stranger. Why is it that we as child, children of God, we follow a stranger called Satan? That's why it, it pains the heart of God. Whenever we are ignorant of his voice and we follow other voices. Now, I want, you, I want you to see other voices that compete with the voice of God. We have number one, the voice of self. There are voices that compete with the voice of God. The voice of self. Wakati unaji unaskiza your own voices within yourself. And you know many times, those voices of self, maybe because of some of the things that you went through in your background, maybe some of the challenges you've gone through in life, you allow those voices within you to dictate your life. Voices that tell you you are not good enough, you are not pretty enough, you are not handsome enough, you are not eloquent enough, you are not gifted enough. And when those voices, you give them a space in your life, they may dictate your life. Hallelujah. And that's why it's dangerous that when instead of praying 
instead of seeking the face of God and the voice of God, you are busy listening to your inner voices. Voices of failure. Voices of condemnation. Maybe there are mistakes that you made. There are, there are sins that you are committed in life. And those voices keep speaking to you and telling you, you will not make it. You cannot serve God. You cannot, uh, you know, go far in life. Hallelujah. This morning, in the name of Jesus, we are silencing all those voices of self that are contrary to the voice of God. Can I hear a big amen? amen. Hallelujah. We are silencing them. I have been there. There are times uh, growing up and there are many voices and sometimes I fell. That's why I'm telling you, you cannot afford to follow those voices within you. And I say they come from the challenges or the, you know, the things, the experiences that you have, you have had in life. But let me say that God's voice has the final say in your life. Praise the Lord. Yes, it doesn't matter what you have gone through in life. And those voices may try and come and speak contrary. But I want to say that God's voice in your life is final. What God says about you is final. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Number two, the voices of men. We have voices of men. Uh, and, and, and I'm not saying all of them. They are good voices. They are people who come and speak hope and, and speak good things. But many times you find the voices of men, many times are not very positive. And I want to say, take care of the people you surround yourself with. Because their voices may shape your life. Hallelujah. If you surround yourself with people who are negative, their negativity and their negative voices, they may have a big part in your life. Surround yourself with people who tell you that you are good, that you are capable, that you have potential. Hallelujah. Amen. Do look at your neighbor and tell them something good. <laughs> but just tell them something good. They will speak a voice of hope in that person. Praise the Lord. Amen. Those are the kind of people you need to entertain. People who encourage you. People who tell you you are going far. You will make it. Hallelujah. Number three is the voice of the devil. Remember Jesus himself, that voice was very evident in his life. If you read in Matthew chapter 4, Wakati Yesu is in the wilderness, here comes the devil with his voice. And he starts trying to trick Jesus. But Jesus stood on what God had said, the word of God. Hallelujah. Number four, we have the voice of, of God. Hallelujah. Now what hinders us from hearing the voice of God? What are these things that hinder us from hearing the voice of God? Because I say God is always speaking, but sometimes we may not get his voice. We may not hear him. We may not even know that he's speaking. What are the things that hinder us? Number one, and very, very important, is sin. Tell your neighbor, sin. Zambi. What sin does? Sin blocks our spiritual ears. You remember when in Genesis chapter uh, 3, no, chapter 4, when Cain and Abel, uh, when they were about to offer, and, and you know, and they offered, yes, God accepts the offering of Abel and denies or rejects the offering of Cain. And God immediately comes to speak to Cain and tells Cain, Cain, or Cain, Cain, yeah, Cain, Cain, there is a 
sin that is just hovering around your life. There is a sin that is brewing up within you. And you ought to overcome it. And the Bible says, kindly not listen to God's instruction or God's counsel. Because his ears were blocked. Sin blocks your ears. You are not able to hear the voice of God. And you know, because sin separates us from God. And therefore, because we, we, when we are separate from God, then we cannot access him. We cannot access his voice. And I, I would like you to check your life. The silence or that inability to hear God's voice. Check and examine your life. Could there be something that is hindering you? Could there be a sin? Could there be, a, you know, an iniquity within you that is hindering you from accessing God and hearing his voice? Hallelujah. Number two. What hinders us from hearing the voice of God? Number two is what we call stress that is caused by the pressures of life. Stress. Tell your neighbor stress. Worry. Anxiety. If we focus more on our problems, we may not hear the voice of God. If we focus more on the stress, on the pressures of life, we may not hear the voice of God. And let me say this, anxiety and stress, if not managed, it draws us far from God. It takes us far from God, rather than taking us towards God. And I am speaking to a generation that the enemy is targeting so much with stress and anxiety. Kuna kuta mtu at 18, at 19, and that person is stressed, is depressed. Wakati mwingine unasikia yale mambo ya namusumbua, honestly, they are, they are petty. But because of the enemy's strategy, Anamsumbua na hiyo stress. Uyo mtu hata haendangi kanisa. Thank God you are in church. Hallelujah. Hey, give yourself a good hand. You are in the house of God. Amen. Stress and anxiety, it may draw you far from God. That's why sometimes people think that the way to, to relieve your stress is by drinking. Is by you know, fornicating and having all manner of, you know, pleasures. That's not the way. Praise the Lord. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, I love this scripture. He said, come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I want to tell you that the solution for stress and for the anxieties of this life is in Christ. It's not outside Christ. Ukienda huko inje kutafuta suluisho, my friend, you will have it rough. Jesus says, come to me. Wakati unasikia uko na stress, just come to me. Seek the Lord when you are stressed. Seek the presence of God. Ata kama you don't have anything much to say. In fact, and I've done it many times. Sometimes you just come to the presence of God and cry. Unalia, unalia, unalia. And you get out refreshed. You get out helped. If you can talk to somebody, that's why we have counselors. That's why we have pastors. Get help. But don't allow that stress to take over your life. It may hinder you from hearing God. Hallelujah. We are rushing, we are rushing. Number three is familiarity to God. 
it hinders you. Familiarity to God. Familiarity to the things of God. To the house of God. Yani umezoea mungu wewe. You just take the things of God lightly. Casually. How utasikia sauti ya mungu? Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't be familiar with God. Don't be familiar with the presence of God. Please. You will God will go cold on you, not even silent cold. Yes. Wakati unamzoea Mungu, unakuwa na mazoea na yeye anakuondokea. Ask for King Saul, he'll, uh, he'll tell you. He became familiar with God. God rejected him. So learn to take the things of God seriously. Learn to take the house of God seriously. Learn to take the presence of God seriously. And you will hear God. Hallelujah. Number four is what I call the noise from the world. What hinders us from hearing the voice of God? Number four is the noise from the world. Kuna kelele mingi. Kelele. Talk about social media. Yeah, that thing is noisy. Hallelujah. There is a lot of noise. And until you shut yourself from that noise, you may not hear the voice of God. So I want to challenge you. Monitor your time on social media. Monitor it. I'm not saying you do away with it, but monitor it. Give God your ample time. Hallelujah. Also friends, you know, the noise from the world may include friends. It may include even family. Hello? Family. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, how does God speak? I'm, I'm just laying a foundation. How does God speak? We are saying God speaks, yes, but how? How does he speak? Wakati ume, ume ondoa hayo manoises mengine yote na masauti mengine yote and you now want to hear the voice of God. How does he speak? Number one, and the most Fundamental is what we call, you know, number one, God speaks through his word. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of, of God. So you hear the word of God by reading his word, by hearing his word. It may come through a sermon, it may come through your own personal Bible study, but God speaks through his word. In the Bible, uh, sorry, in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 2, the Bible says that in the past, God spoke to us through prophets. Uh, you know, but in these last days, God has spoken to us through his son. And you know, in John chapter 1, the Bible says that Jesus is the word of God. So if God will, you know, if God speaks through his son, then it means he's speaking through his word. Because Jesus is the word of God. So this is where you go and read. And I thank God their Bible study. And, and this Thursday we will have it. Jesus, uh, you know, the word of God is when you take time. You may study the word, you may study a chapter, you may study a book that has, you know, a Christian book that has a lot of the word of God. See my story, Senor. That way God will speak through his word. There is one scripture, one verse that pops out. And that word becomes what we call the Rema word. We have the logos, the written word, this one that we read. But there is that word that God speaks speaks to you individually that pops up is what we call the word from God. It is the Rema word. So don't just read the word of God like a novel. Ensure that you get out of that place with the word from God. What is God speaking to me 
individually. What is my rema word? Even in such a sermon, there may be many things I will say, but there is one word that will come out as a rema word for you. And that's God speaking to you. But if you are not sensitive, if you are, if you are familiar, if you are not intentional, my friend, you will hear many voices and, uh, you know, many words coming out. Eh? Unasikia tu, ninaongea, ninaongea, and at the end of it, una, unaeza juliza. By the way, <coughs> what was he saying? Have you, <laughs> I, you know, there were some teachers in high school, ama in uni, unasikia, meongea, 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 naongea, naongea. And at the end of the sermon or the lesson, have you been there? <laughs> Amen. So until you are intentional, you tell God, Lord, I want to hear your voice. I want you to speak to me through your word. As you go for a sermon, you are telling God. That's why we began by praying. You are asking God, God, I want you to speak personally to me until you become intentional you may not hear the voice of god through his word hallelujah number two god speaks through people amen god speaks through people he may speak through sermons hallelujah through prophecies through teachings even through rebuke Wakati kuna huyo mzazi ama that elder, that pastor, who is telling you, stop that, don't do that, leave that, leave that friend, leave that. That is God speaking. Mungu wanaeza kuwa anatumia huyo mzazi kukuambia kitu. Hallelujah. Number three. God may speak through circumstances in life. God may use a very negative thing, a very negative circumstance. God may use a heartbreak. Oh, yes. Thank God for that heartbreak. I know I'll make a few enemies. But thank God for that heartbreak. Say amen. May be God speaking to you. <laughs> Hello? God may use a loss. Now, I, I, I don't mean losses are good. You may lose money, you may lose loved ones. They are painful. But God may use a form of a loss to speak to you. God may use failure. Yani unajaribu kitu inagonga ukuta. I wasn't there. Praise the Lord. So God uses circumstances in life. God uses circumstances in life. Hallelujah. And there are many instances in the Bible. I don't have time. Number four, God speaks to us through dreams, through visions. If you read the Bible in Job chapter 33, verse 14, and 15. The Bible says that God speaks to people through dreams and visions. How many have ever had a dream and a vision? No, let me say a, a dream. There are two. By the way, I, I hope you know the difference. Eh? Dream ni ile umelala kabisa. Umekula ugali, umeshiba, unalala. And then uh, God kind of speaks to you through a dream. Now, let me say this. Don't don't be obsessed with that. Don't be obsessed with that. You know, even there is a cult that is called the dreamers, eh? R.O.T. Eh? Anakuja kwa, kwa, kwa wili, ana, no, wili is married. Eh? Anakuja kwa pita. Namuambia mungu ameni. Nimeota. Nimeota that sili. Ama sili, sili eh? Not sili, sorry. Sili is your wife. 
No, uh, no, uh, no, it's an example. Amen. Uh, it is an example, Peter. So God may speak through dreams. A dream is when you are asleep. God may speak to you. And let me say this. Sometimes God may speak to you through dreams if you are not listening through other means. So Mungu anaezaona hii jamaa is deaf ya iski. Let me give him a dream. Amen. So can you mature up? Hear God the first time so that you don't have to dream again. See you? Amen. But dreams do, you know, God speaks through dreams. Visions is when, let me say this, eh? a vision you may not be asleep. But God may, you may be in prayer, you may be in a place of meditation, and God brings images in your mind and in your spirit, and, and then communicates to you. And let me say this, please. Every communication from God, be it prophecy, be it dreams, be it visions, it must have its backing in the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 